Yo ho ho! And welcome to almost the last lesson in this straight line chapter. After this, there is just the review lesson to go, but there is nothing new in that. It's just a recap of everything from the straight line uh, chapter. But just now, moving on to points of intersection. It's the last lesson with anything new. So what is meant by a point of intersection? Well, this is a straight line chapter, so if you're dealing with straight lines, imagine if you've got two straight lines and they cross at a point. This point is known as the point of intersection. So, in order to find the point of intersection, we are going to use something that we have used in the past. It's everybody's favourite, everybody's old friend. Max absolutely loved this chapter. We are going to use simultaneous equations yeah now there's three ways of solving simultaneous equations and for this chapter we're really just going to be using two of them the first one is substitution and substitution is when you have at least one of the equations in the form of x equals or y equals then you'll know what x or y is so you could just sub it into the other equation. It's nice and simple. It's just straightforward substitution. The other method of solving to find the point of intersection using simultaneous equations is elimination. And that is the one where you had two equations, one above the other, and then you were adding or you're subtracting the equations to eliminate x or y. And as it says here, you write the equations in this form with something x add something y equals some number and then you can cancel the x's or the y's. So I'm going to do an example of each of them and then just throw in a different question at the end. So example number one, find the point of intersection of the lines y equals x plus 1 and 4y plus 2x equals 16. And you can tell how excited Max is that this is back. So what this question means is you've got two straight lines. One of them has the equation y equals x add 1 and the other one has the equation 4y add 2x equals 16. And you want to find out this point that they meet. So to do that, you want to think, right, well, simultaneous equations. But first of all, what you should be noticing is the first equation is in the form of y equals. You know, y is x add 1. So you can just use the substitution method. So to do that, you want to take your other equation. You've got 4y add 2x equals 16. But because we know y is equal to x add 1, we can replace y with x add 1. So in your other equation, you want to take y and replace it with x add 1. So instead of 4 times y, we have 4 times x add 1. Make sure when you do substitute, you put brackets around this x add 1. Otherwise, it would just be 4x add 1, add 2x. You're multiplying everything here by 4, so always use brackets when you're subbing in. So replace y with x add 1. After that, well, you can find out what x is. It's the only unknown in this equation. So multiply out the brackets. 4 times x is 4x. 4 times 1 is 4. You've got add 2x. Nothing's happening with that. And then equals 16. From there, well, 4x add 2x is 6x. Still got add 4. Still got equals 16. Subtract 4 from both sides. So we know 6x is 12. And then you can divide by 6. So we know x equals 2. After that, think back to simultaneous equations. What did you do once you found out one of the values? Calissa, well done. That's right. You sub it into the other equation. So, sub x equals 2 into one of the equations here. Okay, you can sub it into either of them. It doesn't matter which. Okay, because we know x is 2, you could sub it into this equation to find out y, or you could just sub it into this one, and this one is far easier because we've got y equals x add 1. If you know what x is, well, it's nice and simple. So the equation is y equals x add 1. If we know x is 2, we've just got 2 add 1, which gives you 3. And therefore, x equals 2, y equals 3 would be the answer to those uh, equations. So 
Make sure you read the question once you've done that. It doesn't ask you to find out x and y, it asks you for the point of intersection. So you know you're looking for a point with brackets, with a comma, you're looking for two numbers, an x-coordinate, a y-coordinate. You would have to then write it as that with two, three. And POI, just point of intersection, just a short way of writing that. And that's how you would do it. Example two, let's move on and try the next one. So in a triangle, the equation of the median is 3x add 5y minus 23 equals 0, and the equation of the altitude is 5x add 2y minus 13 equals 0. Find the point of intersection. A lot of the time, the questions in higher will say, for part A, work out the equation of the median. For part B, work out the equation of the altitude or the perpendicular bisector. And then for part C, it'll say find the point of intersection. We've already been over how to find the median and the altitude, so I'm giving you both these equations and I'm just doing the part C, if you like, the find the point of intersection. Obviously for this one, if you look at the equations, we do not have them in the form just x equals or y equals. And it's not easy to get into that form. Neither of them would be easy to get into x equals or y equals, so we'd have to use another method. The other method was elimination. And doing that, you want to take both your equations, normally write one above the other, and you want to think, right, well, when you're using this method, most of the time you would have something x add something y equals a number. So the number you want to put on the other side. So to get rid of the minus 23, just add 23 to both sides or move the minus 23 over, it becomes plus 23. So you just need to rearrange the equations first of all. With the second one, 5x add 2y, take away 13 equals zero. Do the same thing, get into the form of x, add y, and then a number uh, equals a number. So move the negative 13 over, and then you've got the equations in that form. So you've got x's and y's on one side, and then a number on the other side. Elimination method then, you want to eliminate your x's or your y's. Uh, to do that, you either add or subtract the equations. Um, but for this, you've got 3 and 5. If you add, the, you get 8. If you're subtracting, well, you're definitely not getting 0. It's not eliminating the x's. Same for y's. So you're going to have to multiply the equations through by a whole number. So for this then, you want to think, right, well, you could either get the same number of x's by multiplying both equations by a number, or get the y's to be the same. I'm going to go with the y's. If you go with the x's, you will get the exact same answer in the end. It doesn't matter which way you go about doing it. To do that, I'm going to think, right, well, 5 times table, 2 times table, the smallest number that's in both would be 10. It's the lowest common multiple. So I'm going to multiply this equation by 2 to give me the 10y. So multiply every single term by 2. So multiply the 3x by 2, the 5y by 2, and the 23 by 2 will give me this new equation. 6x add 10y equals 46. And you want to think, right, well, I've got 10y here, so you need 10y here as well, so you can multiply it by 5. You can always do that. It works fine, and then subtract the equations. What a lot of people like doing, though, is getting one of the equations to be positive and one to be a negative, and then you just add. So I'm going to go down that route. If you do the other way, it's still fine, though. So to get negative 10, I'm going to multiply by negative 5. So doing that, multiply every single one of the terms. Multiply this by negative 5, this by negative 5, and this as well. And it'll give me negative 25x. Take away 10y equals negative 65. As I said, a lot of people like getting it. So you've got one a positive, one a negative, and then you always just add. If you do add them together, then you'd have 6 add negative 25 which is 6 take away 25, which is negative 19. You'd have 10 add negative 10, which is 10 take away 10, which is 0. It eliminates the y's, so we've got 0y down here. And you've got 46 add negative 65, which just becomes take away, so you'd have negative 19. From there, you've got negative 19x equals negative 19. Divide both sides by negative 19 or move the negative 19 to the other side and divide, or think negative 19 times what gives you negative 19, it's just going to be 1. Once you have found 1, uh, x, so you've got x equals 1, what do you do with that? Yes, I can hear Calissa shouting, you're far too good at this. Then you would sub that into the other equation. Good. Uh, so you sub x equals 1 into that equation. Um, 
doing that, you're just replacing the x with 1. So you'd have 3 times 1, add 5y equals 23. Subtract 3 from both sides, so 5y equals 20, and then you've got y equals 4. I am picking the uh, equation here to sub it into, but really you could sub it into uh, either equation. It makes no difference whatsoever. Okay, um, That gives me then x equals 1 and y equals 4. Just make sure that after you do that, you do get your point. It is asking you for a point of intersection, so I've got 1, 4. Just to double check that's right, if we subbed it into this equation here, which we did, you could sub x and y into, say, this one. Just check that you would get 13. Or if you sub in x and y here, and then subtract 13, you should get 0. You can sub it into any of the equations you like. Okay, but if we used this equation here for the first part, then use this to check it. Or if we use this equation here for the first part, use this one to check it. Okay, uh, but you would get 1 and 4. Last example then, example 3. Does the point negative 1, 4 lie on the straight line with that equation? How would you go about doing that? You can imagine James is jumping up and down right now because he knows what to do. And James, yes, you are perfectly right. What you can always do is you can sub these values in. You can sub in the x and the y. If you think about this coordinate, the negative 1 is how far along you would go on the x-axis. The 4 is how far you would go up or down in the y-axis. So that's your x value and that's your y value. And it says if you multiply the y value by 2 and you take away 3 times the x value, you should get 11. So you want to check that by subbing the values in. I'm kind of writing that down just with a wee explanation. Uh, but to do this, we sub the point 1, 4 into the equation. If we find it does equal 11, then we have satisfied the equation and the point does lie on the line. So it means the point is satisfied, so that makes sense. The equation is satisfied, so you would have 11 equals 11. If you do sub it in and you get something else, say on the left-hand side you worked that out and you got 9, well you would have 9 equals 11, which doesn't make sense. That equation would not be equal, the equation is not satisfied, so it would not lie on the line. So if you do get anything else, the point does not lie on the line. So let's try it for this one. To do this, don't just start off saying that 2y minus 3x equals 11. We want to find out the left hand side. Take just the left hand side and see what that is equal to. So the left hand side then, we've got 2y minus 3x. Sub in the y and the x. So you've got 2 times, well y is going to be 4, so you've got 2 times 4. Minus 3 times x is negative 1, so you're taking away 3 times negative 1. That then becomes 8 Take away negative 3, which will become add 3, which does indeed give you 11. Once you've done that, well, how do you know if the point lies in the line? Well, you should be getting 11. You are getting 11. So you can then say that since 11 equals 11, the equation is satisfied. And what does that mean? Well, it means the point does lie on the line. As I said, if you did get anything else, if you did work that out and you got negative 5 for your final answer, well, negative 5 is definitely not equal to 11, so the equation is not satisfied, so the point wouldn't lie on the line. And that's how you would do those ones. If you're happy with these, give the exercise a shot. It is just on page 221. It goes on to 222. It's questions 11 to 19. They do get a bit harder, so check your answers as you go. Let me know if you need help, and think about how well you are getting on with this. Good luck. Enjoy. Have fun.